joining me now is Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. I'm a little tongue-tied because of Nick Saban. I'm, <laughs> I was in the car coming here when I got the news about Nick Saban retiring, and then Prim was like, well, what about Chris Christie? I'm like, well, what about Nick Saban? Um, <laughs> Your reaction to this news tonight? Well, it's an Ohio State guy. Good news. Oh, Nick Saban's out of here. But, uh, you know, on, on, on the political front, look, Chris Christie was a guy without a constituency because whatever his personal grudges against Donald Trump, and of course I'm biased, I endorse Donald Trump, I think he made a great president, will do so again. The problem is even if you separate Chris Christie's feelings about Donald Trump, there is no constituency for an open borders, pro-free trade agenda, which is effectively what Chris Christie was offering. We've had it with that. For 40 years, the old guard of the Republican Party offered something. It delivered less freedom, less prosperity, less security. Why would we want to go back? And if you want to run in a Trump GOP or any Republican Party that's going to exist for the next 20 or 30 years, you've got to accept explain what's going on in the country, how do we fix it? You can't pretend we're living in 2004 because we're just not. No, and he made a promise tonight, Senator, um, as he was dropping out. Watch us. I want to promise you this. I am going to make sure that in no way do I enable Donald Trump to ever be president of the United States again. Well, he was the first uh, to endorse him in 2016, which I at the time recommended to him that he do, sure. and he did that. Uh, and now his promise to his big constituency is, okay, I'm going to be acceptable, so maybe I can go on and do one of these other things, which a lot of these former you know, conservatives or people who call themselves conservatives tend to do. Well, and Laura, when he says he's going to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president, that just means you're giving a second term to Joe Biden. We've got 12,000 illegal border crossings a day under President Joe Biden. And, and Trump is the threat to the country. It's crazy. I don't know what these people have taken where they don't like what Donald Trump tweets, and so they're going to throw the country oh, to a personal, president. it's personal, I think. I think there's a lot of personal and animus That's absolutely what it is, but you need to wake up and actually recognize that the real threat is coming from an open borders president who's making the country weaker to China, who's sending billions of dollars of weapons to overseas conflicts, not preserving it for our own defense. Joe Biden is the threat to American democracy. He's the person we need to defeat. If you don't accept that, you shouldn't be running in a Republican primary. And I have to say, in the, in the same, by the same token, and she has a lot more money, and she's polling, you know, okay in New Hampshire now within single digits and one poll uh, against Trump, is Nikki Haley. That hot mic moment really was the news, because Christie's smart. I mean, sure. yeah, I don't agree with him on all these issues, but he's not a dumb guy. I mean, not I used to watch his old debates. They were fantastic. That's the guy we, you know, we always wanted back in national politics. But he knows that Nikki Haley's the Jeb Bush of 2024, does he not? Oh, that's exactly right. And, and look, Nikki Haley's entire strategy, we have to remember, Laura, it's to convince enough liberal suburbanites in Massachusetts to cross over and vote Republican in the New Hampshire primary. That is the only thing that she's counting on. I don't think that's a winning strategy in New Hampshire, but it's definitely not a winning strategy nationally. There aren't, there aren't a whole lot, lot of liberal suburbanites from Massachusetts who are voting nationally in Republican primaries. There's no chance that she can win this primary. Yeah. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. All we're doing is making it easier for Joe Biden to win re-election. We need to unite it behind the nominee of the party. That's going to be Donald Trump. Yeah, when you add up Vivek and DeSantis and Trump, it's about 86 percent of the Absolutely. party. So, um, Senator, speaking of Trump as a threat, former Attorney General Eric Holder told USA Today Monday that there would be incalculable damage to the country if Trump wins. Asked if Obama shares that view, Holder replied, absolutely. I don't think it's a question about that. I think that's what motivates him. I think that's what will continue to motivate him, along with all the private jet travel to, to <laughs> Oahu and Martha's Vineyard. Uh, they're worried, are they not, about Trump? Because I think this time, if he gets in, that swamp will be drained. And people are going to really see what's at the bottom of that muck in Washington, D.C. And that is a problem for these people. I think it's exactly right. I think the second Trump administration will be all the things that we liked about the first Trump administration, but really on steroids. And I mean that in a good way, Laura. These guys are completely out of their mind. Eric Holder, the guy who used the power of the federal government to attack Catholic nuns, instead of stopping the flow of, of drugs and fentanyl across the Contempt southern border. Contempt of Congress, too. Yeah, he didn't yeah. show up to it, testify. It, it, it is so interesting they see Donald Trump as such a threat. I'm glad they see him as a threat, because the guy who uses the federal government not to protect our border, but to gang up on Catholic nuns, 
it's a good thing when he doesn't like Donald Trump. I think that, 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 that's the best endorsement Trump could ask for. Your message to Senate Republicans on this, quote, raw deal immigration nightmare that uh, Langford, et cetera, are pushing. Well, look, I think we have to be really, really careful here. The Democrats are desperate to get more money for Ukraine. They are actually, I think, willing to give us something real on the border. We've got to make sure we get real concessions on the border. No Nora, deal. Not no a deal, Senator. Not no a rubber, deal. Not a rubber stamp Don't fall for Joe into Biden. that trap. It is a trap. Ask Marco Rubio how it worked out in 2013. That's exactly it right. It did not work out well. It is a trap, and it's a gift to Biden, and I know you're smarter than that. Senator, great to see you, as Thanks, always. Laura. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.